According to an article by Report, there has been a couple of selections for the Springbok team to face New Zealand that have been leaked. We're going to dive into all of those and I'm going to give you the possibilities that have come out from these selections that have been leaked. As always, let me know your guys' opinions down in the comments. If you haven't, please hit that subscribe button. Still about 83% of you that watch this channel on a regular basis are not subscribed. It really helps this channel grow. It helps us out more than you know. Also, leave this video a like and let's get in to these selections. So I do think we need to take this with a little bit of a grain of salt just because this could be Rassi Rasmus playing mind games and we know how he can be he's very tactical with what he says around the Springbok side so as much as I think these are true they could there is probably a couple of percent chances that these aren't true now the first one is that Rassi Rasmus is making some bold selections right in the video we dropped yesterday in our 23 man side to face the Springboks we went very conservative conservative we went for experience and it doesn't seem like Rassi Rasmus is going to go that way I think as Springbok fans we need to remember and I'm talking to myself here but I think it's it's good that I say this on the channel we need to remember that there's a bigger picture here, right? We just want to win every single game. But in Rassi Rasmus's mind in the Springboks camp, there is a bigger picture. They're working towards that 2027 Rugby World Cup and they're going to use every single game they have up until then to test out players, to find what works, to find the combinations that work and really get more experience under the younger guys. Now, the first selection leak is Gerrit Steenkamp starting at loose head prop, which then means that Ox will probably start on the bench. Now, that's the role that Ox sort of played last year in the 2023 Rugby World Cup behind Steven Kitsov. He came on as an impact player and he really did impact the game phenomenally well. If you think back to that England game, Ox was the one who won that scrum, got us the penalty, and then 100 Pollard ended up putting it over. So Ox is no stranger to the bench and being that impact player coming off with the bomb squad. Gerrit Steenkamp has definitely impressed Rassi Rasmus and the coaching staff in the Ireland series, as well as the Australia tests. So it's a big, big opportunity for Gerrit Steenkamp. He's going to be starting, allegedly, um, which is going to do wonders for his confidence, and he's going to be up against a very, very difficult side in the All Blacks. So Again, this is just Rassi Rasmus giving Gareth Steenkamp some experience. Ox is extremely experienced coming off of the bench. And if there is a problem, Ox can come on a little bit earlier, which also then means that Steven Kitsov is not going to get picked in the team. I don't think that is too much of a surprise. We, I didn't think he was going to get selected in the, in the Springbok side to face New Zealand just because he's coming back from injury. He's only had a couple of Curry Cup games. And I think we'll probably see him late in the rugby championship, maybe against Argentina, he'll get some game time. So that's the first one, which is a bold, bold selection from Rassi Rasmus. I'm sure he's going to pair him up with probably Franz Malherbe on the other side of the scrum. And then I wouldn't be surprised to see Vincent Koch come off the bench um, for Franz Malherbe. Then the next couple of selections are within the tight five. So there is speculation and allegedly Peter Steph the Toy will be fitting in to that number five jersey. Into that lock position alongside Ian Benetzebeth. We know all the injury statuses within that lock position. Luit de Jacha, Jean Klein, Franco Mostert. It is a spot that we are really lacking some depth. I know we still have Salman Murat. We have Ruan Nokia. And now Nicholas Janssen van Rensburg is in the mix as well as RG Sneeman. So this is telling me that... Uh, ben Jason Dixon is probably going to start in that number seven jersey, which I absolutely love. I feel like we did need to make some space for him because I do think he's a very, very good player, a very much a Peter Steff-esque type of player. But then you've got to start looking at the bench. And if we're playing two locks, then it's probably going to be Ruan Nokia and potentially Archie Sneeman, but Archie Sneeman could also fall out of favor just because he was he didn't play against Australia. So we could see a combination of maybe Salman Murat and Ruan Nokia on the bench, or if we only go for one lock, then it's probably Ruan Nokia. So Archie Sneeman could potentially not even be playing in this game against the All Blacks. Obviously, I do think he is still our best impact player coming off the bench in that lock position. So I, I would think he's probably going to get um, a position on the bench, but according to this article, it's 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 quite vague and it's not too sure if RG Snaman's going to be on the bench or not. So it depends what split we go for, if we go for two locks, if we go for one lock, and then who fits in to those boots. With a Peter Steph the Toy playing in that number five jersey and not the number seven, I would be inclined to think that we probably will go for two locks and then one less um, loose forward, and then Peter Steph can move from lock to uh, that number seven jersey. So it's going to be interesting. I would probably put Ron Nokia on the bench. If Archie Sneeman's fit, I'd put Archie Sneeman on the bench. 
But it's it's interesting because now you've got Sia Khaleesi, you've got Ulrich Lowe, and then at eight, we thought maybe Jasper Visser would be coming back. But this article is saying that that's probably not going to happen. I think we're probably still going to stick with Ulrich Lowe in that number eight jersey. Quacker Smith will, will definitely come off the bench, which probably means that Jasper Visser is, isn't even in the starting 23-man side to face the All Blacks, which is absolutely crazy. But it also shows the balls that Rasi Erasmus has and he's trying to give these younger guys experience against one of the best teams in the world. He's trying to get uh, Ben Jason Dixon experience. He's trying to get Ulrich Lowe experience. He's trying to get Ron Nokia, Salman Murat experience coming off of that bench. So again, it comes down to that. Yes, we want to win this game against the All Blacks, but there is a bigger picture at play here. Jasper Vesa is still going to be fit in a couple of weeks time. We can pick him against someone else. But for right now, I think the emphasis is on that experience, getting these younger guys into a match that is extremely high level against the All Blacks and seeing how they fare against them. So those are the leaks or leak selections that have come out with the forwards. Very, very interesting. Let me know what you guys think about that. But we also have some suggestions for the back line. Now, according to this article, Sasha and Kourbis are going to be starting in that 9 and 10 position. Now, in our selection video yesterday, we went with Andre Pollard just because of how big this test match is against New Zealand. It's a rematch of the World Cup final. But it looks like Rassi Rasmus is going to stick to his guns. He started uh, Sasha in both Australia tests. Keep that momentum going. Give him experience against New Zealand in that number 10 jersey at Ellis Park. It's a massive, massive game. And then it makes sense to partner him up with Quirbus Reinach. In our selection video, we went for Grant Williams in the in, with the inexperience at 9. And then Andre Pollard with the experience at 10. Rassi Rasmus seems to have flipped this. So Quirbus will be starting, which probably means Grant's going to come off the bench, which he's been doing so well at in uh, the previous test matches. And then Sasha's going to get another go in that number 10 jersey. Again, maybe just emphasizing how much they believe in Sasha as the Springbok fly off going forward. Then obviously we've got uh, the guys that have been uh, called back, Kane and Moody, Jaden Hendrickson and Andre Esterhazen, but it doesn't seem like uh, Rassi Rasmus is going to call them up just yet. Obviously, Kanan Moody, it's a very, very tempting to bring him into the team. But I think with Sasha at 10, they're probably going to go for a very experienced backline in Damien Delende, Jesse Creel, Chesden, Curtly, and Vili um, at 15, which makes complete sense. You don't want to throw Sasha into the deep end against the All Blacks with not too much experience around him. So for Jaden Hendrickson, I think he just needs to be in camp for a little bit longer. As we know, he's been coming back from an injury. Um, so I like I like that selection of Quirbus and Sasha with all the experience behind him. In the forward pack, very surprising to see Gerrit Stian come starting with Ox on the bench. But again, it comes down to that experience. Don't be surprised to see Peter Steff playing in that number five jersey with Ben Jason Dixon on the side. Ulrich Lowe at the back of the scrum. And probably Quacker on the bench. Maybe even Jasper can be on the bench. Quacker can slot into one of the flanker positions. So very, very interesting. I can't wait for Tuesday when Rassi Erasmus announce this, announces this team to face the All Blacks. It's going to be a monumental game against the All Blacks, which I can't wait for. Let me know what you guys think of these leaked selections. Do you agree with them? Do you not agree with them? If you haven't, please absolutely murder that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Peace.